We're going to ask to use the rectangle rule in this question to find upper and lower bounds. So I'm going to show you two different pictures and we're going to look at the, the different sums that we can take. So first of all, well actually, let me uh, just indicate. So because we're using rectangles of width 0.25, okay, the width is one overall. So we're going to get four rectangles. I'm just going to sort of indicate roughly where the where they're going to begin and end. Okay, now there's two different types of sum that we can make. We can make a left-hand sum, which is when we use the left point of the function to be the height of the rectangle. So on this first one, because the function hits zero, actually the first rectangle is going to be zero, and then it's going to jump up to here. Okay, it's just a sketch, so bear with me, but what we can see is we are underestimating the curve. This is going to give me a lower bound. Whereas over here, I'm using the right hand sum. So actually this here would be our first height. To be fair, probably should have just started from the right. There we go, and we see we're going to get an overestimate. So this is going to be the upper bound. That won't always be the case. If you take the right-hand sum, it all depends on the shape of the curve. So left-hand sum will give me a lower bound. And the right-hand sum, upper bound. Okay, so now I just need to find these uh, these areas. So remember I'm approximating this integral. Do you know what? I will write it. Sorry, I was gonna like just write at the top. I think I'm gonna write it as I go. Okay. Um so first of all, let's think about the x values. So we're going to have, um, for the left-hand sum, I'm going to be using 1, and then 1 1.25, and 1 1.5, and 1.75. For the right-hand sum, I'm going to be using all of those except the 1, and I'm also going to be using the 2. So I could just make a little table right here, to be honest. And I've just realized I need to spread it out more because I've got some quite quite a lot to write down. So one Okay, and then I'm gonna find different values of y. So the first one's actually gonna be sine of zero. Okay, I'm just gonna get zero. Um here I'm gonna get sine of a half. Okay, so they're like the easiest to write down. Then I'm gonna get sine a half of root 0 0.25. So those are the exact values and you can work with these exact values or you might want to put them into calculators and just use the approximate values because at the end of the day it's going to be approximate. So back to the left hand sum this is going to be approximately right now I'm going to be basically doing base times height uh, four times so it's going to be for the left hand sum it's going to be 0 times 0 0.25 plus this times 0 0.25 and so on what I can actually do is just factorize out the 0 0.25 Remember, I'm not including the sine of half here because I'm just looking at the left hand sum. Okay, and I'm just going to put that into my calculator. So just do it really carefully. I can write 0 0.5 instead of a half.
sorry, I'm questioning. Did I make a sorry? Apologies, that sh I shouldn't have had another bracket there, because that bracket in times in the 0.25 by. Okay, you can. It's very easy to make a mistake and then not not spot it. So close that one and close overall. And we get 0 0.2533. I don't, know, I don't want to write the whole thing out again. The right hand sum is going to be very similar, but just instead, uh, I'm going to have to also add sine of a half. So because the first term was zero, I didn't have to include it. I'm now not including it, but it doesn't really matter. Now I just need to actually add sine a half times 0.25, of course. There we go, I get 0 0.3731. So therefore, the lower bound because I'm just I'm just finishing the question now. It's asked me for the upper and lower bounds correct of three significant figures. So the lower bound is going to be 0 0.253. Upper bound is 0 0.7, it's 0.373. When I did it, I decided to write it as an inequality. I thought that was, you know, quite useful. But this was not on the mark scheme and not expected. Which is quite nice to get this range using the rectangle rule. Okay, but to be fair, those are the ones that should be highlighted. And before I move on, let me just show you one um, alternative route to doing this dealing with this problem, and that is to use the table function. Number nine on this class with calculator. The function is going to be this sine. So the, the we call it the integrand, the thing we're actually integrating. We're trying to remember, we're trying to find these rectangles underneath. So sine of a half. And square root of x minus 1, close bracket. Okay, so I want to start at 1, and then I want to end at 2. And I actually want to go up in steps of 0 0.25. And then this will nicely calculate these tabulated values. So it's maybe a bit safer, you could argue. Um, so what I'm saying is, instead of writing sine at half and so on, 0 0.25, square root of 0.25. I could have just written 0 0.2474 and then 0 0.2474 and the same for these and then put them into here. Slightly maybe more careful. I don't know if I did it again maybe I would, I would do it like that. I just wanted to make you aware of the table function. If you, if you hadn't seen it already. Apologies if you have and you're like yep I knew that already. Fair play. Okay so Right now we're being asked to use, okay, we're going to, basically we're being asked to do this integral exactly and we're being told the substitution. All right, that's, that's nice. So I'm going to do it up here. Okay, I'm going to let t equal the square root of x minus 1. So I'm going to write it straight away in index form because I know that I need to find dt by dx because we're going to be using integration by substitution. That means we need to change dx to dx by dt dt. Okay, so this using the chain rule is going to be a half x minus 1 to the minus the half. I've just used the chain rule quickly, multiply by the power, there's nothing in front of the x, reduce the power by 1. This means that dx by dt, okay, I just need to flip it around. It's going to be 1 over this, which becomes 2 when I flip that around, and this one's going to become x minus 1 to the half. 
Okay. So that means that therefore the integral of sine a half square root x minus one dx equals I am gonna so it's gonna be sine just to make sure I show enough working x minus one dx by dt dt. So this is going to become the integral of sine a half. And now I can replace that square root of x minus 1 by t. So it's a half t. And I'm timesing by, OK, now the, the great thing about the substitution is once we've done our derivative, right, this x minus 1 to the half is actually t. So I just get 2t in my answer. So it's sine a half t times 2t. We're always, remember, trying to get it. Things either cancel, or in this case, it just when we define when we differentiate it, we get it back in terms of t really nicely after we've done one over the derivative. So this is simply going to become the integral of two t sine a half t as required. Okay, good first step. Right, now it's asking us to do this, find this exact area essentially. So we've got a little bit more to do. We just have to do um, apply our substitution to the limits. Don't forget about that. So let me come all the way down here. Now this, remember, is x equals and x equals. And we've just shown that it's going to equal, I'm going to keep the limits in terms of x for the moment. We've just shown that we get 2t sine to the half t dt. And remember, we had that t was equal to the square root of x minus 1. So when x equals 1, t is just going to be 0. And then when x is 2, t is going to be the square root of 1. It's just going to be 1. And I can either write t, or at this point, I could just write 2. Oh, sorry, not 2 and 1. 1 and 0. Right, now we've got an integral of a product. This is classic integration by parts because I've got a nice, I've got like a not so nice function here multiplied by a very nice function. So I can let this equal u and then this is going to equal v dash. And then we can use the formula uv. There's going to be limits around it, but I won't bother with that for the moment. And then u dash v. Okay, that's actually given in the formula book. So u dash is just going to be 2, which is great because that's what makes the second integral so much nicer. And then v, I need to integrate sine of a half t. So I'm going to get cos of a half t, but I'm going to get a minus because uh, cos differentiates to minus sine. So sine integrates to minus cos. <clears throat> and then when I differentiate this, I'm going to times by a half. So I'm going to need to times by 2. I'm basically dividing by a half when I integrate sine. Okay, so I'm going to get definite integral 2t and then I'm times in by minus 2 cos a half t. Don't forget about the limits. And then we've got 1, 0. I'm going to get a 2 and times and by v, so I'm going to get 2 times minus 2 cos a half t. Now I've actually got a bit carried away because remember the question actually gives us the answer. You have to show that it's this, 8 sine a half minus 4 cos a half. Okay, just bear that in mind.
Right, I'll do a little intermediate step. So this is going to become minus 4 t cos to the half t. And then I'm going to get plus the integral of 4. You can even bring the 4 out. I nearly did, but I'm going to stick with it here. That's a half. So, I'm going to substitute in, I'm going to get minus 4 times 1 times cos a half. And then I'm going to be doing minus, minus 0, so actually that, that doesn't matter. And over here, I'm going to get plus 8 sine a half t in the same sort of way I'm dividing through by a half or times in by 2. Okay, that will differentiate back, it's always worth checking. And then this, I suppose it's a show that question. Okay, don't rush it. So 8 sine a half. And I'm going to be minusing sine of 0, which is just 0. And finally, I'm going to get 8 sine a half minus 4 cos a half. That is our answer. That is uh, this integral here. And although the question doesn't talk about it, we've actually found the lower and upper bound of this quantity because this is the exact integral. And remember, right at the start, we showed that it was between this. So, I mean, you know, these, this is quite a widespread of values, but you can see how you can use the re rectangle rule really effectively. You could make the rectangle smaller and you could get very good approximations for these sorts of things if you, if you wanted to. Well done.